Mike Westfall here at McDonald Garden Center, and today we're going to talk about pruning, specifically roses and crepe myrtles, because it's a great time to prune those plants out in the garden right now. So, but first I want to talk about the different types of pruning tools that you'll need to accomplish these tasks. This is a head shear, great for light work, shaping, topiaries, great, great tool to have. Then you've got your lopping shears. Lopping shears are better for the bigger work, for the bigger branches. These are great because you can get a lot of torque behind them. So really, really good pair of pruners to have for those larger jobs. Then of course your handheld pruners. Handheld pruners are really, really important because you're gonna use them all the time and they're great. These are bypass pruners so they make a nice clean cut. You don't wanna use anvil pruners anymore. So now we're gonna go out and I'm gonna show you how to prune crepe myrtles and roses. Crepe myrtles are one of Hampton Road's favorite trees to grow. It's an amazing plant, very easy to grow in this area, but they do need some pruning and they do like to be pruned. So I'm gonna show you some ways to prune to correct some of the issues. We've got some suckering wood that we need to get out. We've got some lower branches. We want to limit up to force the growth up. We want to cut off the seed pods and decrease any crossing branches. So we're going to go through and do that. So we've got suckers. Suckers are the shoots that come up out of the ground that you don't want. If they're low to the ground and they're easy to clip out, you can just use your handheld pruners and clip them out. Sometimes you'll have a thicker piece of wood that you might need to use your lopping shears for. And there's where you just go in and you just got to cut it out. And that's how you do it. You just get in there and you just cut it out. Because the better that you are at cutting that out, the less suckers you'll get each year. And I got another big one over here. And then there you go. So that's a good way of getting the suckers out. All right, next we're going to work our way up the branches, up your main branches. Most crepe myrtles have multi trunks. So you're going to work your way up your branches. You're going to find these lower twig branches that you definitely don't want. What we're trying to do is force the habit up and we're going to take out these little low twiggy branches that you see down here and that will help increase the force the growth up. So just chip, clip those right off, clip them right close to the trunk. Okay, now we're going to limb up and basically what that means is again eliminating some of that weaker smaller wood and keep increasing the habit up. So you're going to see some of these lower branches that aren't as strong. They're a little bit more outward facing or inward facing. So they're working their way on the inside. And we're just going to clip those off all the way around. Again, cutting close to the trunk with our handheld pruners. And that way you eliminate some of that weaker lower wood. And again, we're increasing that habit and we're going upward with the tree. So we want to eliminate crossing branches that are going to rub and cause issues down the road. So here we've got a great example of two branches that are directly crossing and rubbing up against each other. A little bit thicker wood, so I'm going to use my lopping shears here. I'm going to choose to take out this one because it's a little bit of the thinner branch. It's the smaller, weaker wood. So I'm going to go in and again, just cut that right off close to the trunk and that eliminates that crossing branch. Next and last, we're going to prune off the old seed pods or the blooms from last year. What it does is it creates this weak wood up at the top and you're not going to get very strong blooms out of that next year. So what I'm going to do is follow that back to about, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a half inch uh, a branch and cut that off at an angle so that you don't have any issues down the road. And then I'm just going to take some of the smaller wood off the branch so you have this nice smooth branch. So again, we're going to take the seed pod off and then clip off any weaker wood around it so you've got that nice branch. And we're going to do that to the whole tree. We'll see what it looks like when we're done. And here's the finished product. We've got a nice clean base with no suckering. We've got no branches on the bottom on the trunks. We've also got a nice structure. We've clipped it up so we've got some nice height. We're pushing the growth out of the top and then we've clipped the tops, taking the seed pods off and the weak wood so we get nice big blooms next year. There's two different ways to prune roses. The first one I'm going to show you is on a shrub rose, which would be like a knockout rose or some of your flower carpet roses. But basically a shrub rose is one that you don't have to be too picky about how you prune it. So I'm going to use my trusty head shears and we're going to prune this basically just to shape it and to get rid of some of the weaker wood, some of the leftover seed pods. And what that's going to do is invigorate new growth next year. So basically I'm just going to take these head shears and I'm just going to chop right around the edges first. And then we're just going to keep on going real easy. You don't have to be real picky about how you do it, where you do it. Just super simple. That's why people grow these roses because they're easy to do. What this does though is it keeps the size in check a little bit and it helps you just like I said get new bigger blooms next season. And there you go. You're basically just going to shear it back just to cut out some of that weaker wood so you get nice big blooms. If you want to be a little bit more detailed, you can take your hand pruners and you can go through and prune out some of the dead wood, like a branch like that that would be dead. You can see it because it's turned a different color. And then you just reach in and grab it out. But that's basically all you're doing is just pruning it back lightly just to help invigorate new growth this spring. All right, now the second type of rose 
is your hybrid teas, your grandiflores, your long stem cut roses. Now they need to be pruned a specific way. What you want to do, what I've already done here, is I've just lopped off the top with my hedge shears. So I've just cut off all the top branches just to get them out of my way. And now I'm going to go and try and find my best canes. And your canes are your big thick wood in here that you're going to get your biggest blooms out of. So what I'm going to do is go through and identify which ones those are. And I'm going to cut those back about 18 to 24 inches from the ground. So here we go, and then just eliminate any of the weaker wood or anything that I don't think I want. So the first one I see is this one right here, the front that's facing outwards. I don't want any of that. It's a little bit weaker. And then I'm going to say, here's a good cane. And we're going to cut it at an angle, and we're going to cut that one off. Here's another good cane. It splits. I'm going to take that off, cut it at an angle. And then I'm just going to work my way all the way around it now. there you have it. So what I've done now is I've selected my best canes. I've left the center nice and hollow to allow the sunlight and the, the airflow when the spring new growth comes. We've got nice big thick wood that we've cut into, all about 18 to 24 inches from the ground. We're going to get a lovely rose here this coming spring.